morning. It is so good to have each one of you here today as we celebrate the class of 2022. Before our invocation, we want to make sure that you stay hydrated. There is water on the outer perimeters, so please make sure that you get water if you need water. You can move around and about if you need water. We don't want anyone to not feel hydrated, okay? So for our invocation this morning, please bow with me. Omniscient God, creator of this beauty that surrounds us, our source of light, peace, and everlasting love. Thank you for your common presence dwelling in the midst of us this hour. As we gather unified to honor and celebrate this graduating class, sustain us with your grace and assuring presence. May it rest and abide with each speaker, each graduate, each family member, every part of the Hollins community. May this day unfold in your unfailing love, and for this we give you thanks. Amen. You may be seated. Please welcome President Mary Dana Hinton. Good morning, good morning, and greetings, members of the Hollins University Board of Trustees, esteemed faculty and staff, proud parents, and most especially, our students. Congratulations to the undergraduate and graduate classes of 2022. <laughs> Please accept my most heartfelt welcome to the 180th commencement exercises at Hollins University. It is a privilege to stand before you on the most significant and joyful day of the academic calendar. There's a quote with which I am familiar that takes on special meaning at commencement. It reads, behind you all your memories, before you all your dreams, around you all who love you, within you all you mean, need. As a community that is soon to be behind you, please know, graduates, that you have made Hollands better. It has truly been a privilege to journey with you. The spirit of love, action, and justice that you brought to Hollands was palpable since you first arrived on campus. And while you have experienced the most challenging of collegiate adventures, from a hurricane to a pandemic, you have proven yourselves to be hopeful, engaged, and filled with purpose. I hope that your memories of Hollands will be defined by the ways you excelled, learned to lead, and grew. I pray that it will be moments of learning, courage, and kindness that will illuminate your memories of your time here. Now as you look before you and as you dream big dreams, know that you are equipped to excel in the world. Your liberal arts education has prepared you to face whatever professional, civic, or personal opportunities and challenges you encounter. You have the depth of knowledge acquired in your academic discipline and the breadth of knowledge acquired as a liberal arts graduate. You are ready to chase your dreams. Now, take a moment, graduates, and look around you. Next to you are the only people in the world who shared this unique Hollands experience with you at this moment in time. They know a version of you that has never been known before, that will never be known again. The people surrounding you are your Hollands family. And I ask that you commit to continuing to lift one another up as you've done so well during your time here. And seated just beside and behind you are the people who have always loved you. And today, you manifest their hopes and dreams for you. 
Your achievement this day is a symbol of your gratitude, honoring and thanking them for investing in and supporting you. But most of all, students, when your memories feel far away, when your nights are dreamless, when you cannot find the ones you love or who love you, know that in your heart, you carry all these things and you are enough. Everything you need is within you. Every warm memory you've had, every dream you've ever held, every person who loves you is an inextricable part of who you are today. Within you is all the strength you need to do great things. Within you is all the joy and purpose you need to shine brightly in the world. That is who you are. And the fact that Hollins University is now a part of you means that wherever you go, whoever you encounter, we are there with you. We believe in you, we honor you, and you are enough. So class of 2022, on behalf of the trustees, faculty, staff, and administration of Hollins University, it has truly been an honor and a privilege to serve you. We cannot wait to see the magnificent things you will do in the world. Congratulations. Now graduates, I am very sorry to share that our beloved commencement speaker, Alexandra Trower, is unable to join us today. Unfortunately, she is tested positive for COVID and must remain in isolation. In consultation with senior class presidents, Summer Jaime, and Allison Mahano, as well as SGA President Lena Garung, we have, print, we have printed Alex's remarks so that you may carry them with you throughout your life. They, along with Alex, have asked that I read her remarks as well, and it will be an honor and a privilege to do so. In your programs, you will find a wonderful biography of Alex. But please allow me to add that there is no more generous, loving, kind, professional, or caring person in our world. It is a loss to not have her here today. You see, Alex loves deeply with her full heart, fiercely with all her strength, and gently with great compassion. You are honored to have her as your sister. I am honored to have her as our board chair and my friend. And now it is my pleasure to read the 180th commencement speech by Alexandra Trower, class of 1986. Welcome graduates, family and friends, Hollins, faculty, staff, and board of trustees. Graduates, I am so honored and humbled that you asked me here to speak with you today. 36 years ago, I was sitting in what very well could have been the exact same seat that one of you is sitting in right now. And I don't mean that metaphorically, but quite literally. We keep a tight budget at Hollins, and a 36-year-old chair is not out of the question. I remember that day so clearly. The ceremony's gravity, everyone invoking all sorts of quotes, scripture, and history, talking about how this time would never come again, and how it's not an ending, but a commencement, a new beginning a monumental moment. Yes, 
There is definitely gravitas to this moment, but there is also tremendous joy. Graduates, you did it. You did something really, really hard. You began at Hollins and then, right in the middle of it all, COVID-19 cracked the world open and our old world kind of fell apart. But with the help of our leader, President Mary Dana Hinton, together with the entire campus, you built a new Hollins community. This extraordinary culture of care for which this wonderful class of 2022 will forever be known. You did all that during a time of racial reckoning, of political upheaval, of cancel culture, despite fear of, il of illness and even death, while still being students, artists, athletes, workers, and friends. You did not give up. Congratulations. So yes, 36 years ago, I sat in that seat. I was ready to bolt and start to live my grown-up life. Now, don't get me wrong. I loved my time at Hollins, or at least most of it. But let's be real. College is about learning and growing and evolving. And that can be painful at times. At least it was for me. And while I loved my friends, most of my classes and professors, I wanted to start living my adult life because I knew exactly what it was going to look like. I was going to take New York by storm and have a brilliant publishing career. So I arrived in New York City with my best friend from Holland and money I'd saved from summer jobs and thankfully found an apartment. All I needed was my dream job easy. I knew it might not be for other people, but I was so sure that my winning personality, my great education, my can-do attitude, and willingness to put in long hours would make things happen for me right away. Well, right away became months, and my confidence edged closer to panic. I could not find a job in my chosen field, it was almost as if my field didn't know I had chosen it. <laughs> I wasn't being picky. I was ready for entry-level work. But what I didn't know in those days is that entry-level work in, publishing, in a publishing house or magazine required one critical skill. And it wasn't love of books, the ability to write beautifully, or have fantastic grades. It was, how many words a minute could you type? And I was a terrible typist. Every interview first required taking a typing test. I cannot convey to you the number of typos I made or how slowly I typed. I didn't even make errors quickly. <laughs> and these were for jobs earning $12,000 a year. I went on dozens of interviews, failed every test, no job offers, my money was running out. Now luckily, a recruiter took the time to meet with me and told me about something called corporate communications. It was a lot like publishing, but for a company, and it paid more, and best of all, no typing test required. So fast forward, I got a job as a communications assistant at a long distance telephone company that paid me $18,000 a year. It certainly wasn't as glamorous as working for Vogue, and the only interest I had in the long distance business was talking to my friends on the phone. But it was my first step in a non-linear path of a career in communications that would last 35 years. Take me all over the world, but more important, would lead me to do work that would have an impact on the lives of the people we served, on the lives of the people I got to work with, and would help shape me into the person I would become. The reason that I share this story with you is this. The 
first lesson that I wish I had known when I was in your seat decades ago, at the start of your post Holland's journey, pick one thing. That's it. Pick the thing that is most important to you and go for it. For me, bigger than anything, my publish bigger than my publishing career was my lifelong dream of living in New York. So I got there. I didn't get a job in my chosen field. I wasn't working for a company I particularly cared about at first, and I really wasn't the best assistant. But I was living life in New York City. For you, have your dream, your plan, where you want to live, which field you want to be in, which company, organization, or institution you want to be a part of, which job you want. But start with the most important thing. Now, if I stop there, I would be committing commencement speaker malpractice because I have to add one crucial fact. Your most important thing will change over time. You still need to figure out what that one most important thing is for you right now, but be prepared for forks in the road as you move forward. The second lesson from that story is ask for help. Asking for help connected me to the reality of the problem. This kind recruiter helped me to trade my map in for a compass. Sometimes you need a map, true. But at that point, I needed a compass. My map, it turned out, was a fantasy. Asking for help gave me the reality check I needed and helped me make a critical pivot. Asking for help doesn't mean that you're weak or that you don't know what you're doing. In fact, it's quite the opposite. Asking for help is a sign of strength and courage. And one of the best parts of Holland's is that Holland's graduates are always there to help each other. Pick up the phone, reach out on LinkedIn, send an email or a text, but ask. There is nothing that makes me happier than to hear from a Holland student or graduate. And the secret is that being asked for help does something amazing for the other person. For me, and maybe it's because I can be bossy, it lifts me up, makes me feel needed, and gives me such joy to help others avoid some of the many mistakes I've made and the puddles I have sloshed through. We can tend to think of asking as embarrassing for us and a burden on the other person, but when we reach beyond that barrier, that impossible goal of always being perfect and strong, we step into a shared space and realize that we are human together. Every single one of you can and should be that for each other. That's what brought me to Hollins as a student. It's what brought me back to Hollins as a member of the alumni board, then the board of trustees, and for the last four years as board chair. Let me tell you, it's all about help and lifting each other up. I have Holland's friends of all generations I go to for advice, for venting, for expertise. And in turn, I have found doctors for people. I've been a matchmaker of marriages and friendships. And when I got senior enough, I was able to create space for 20 Holland's interns at the Estee Lauder companies, which now has three soon to be four, I'm looking at you, Rosie Wrong, recent Hollins graduates who are knocking it out of the park. And you are now part of that mosaic of Hollins graduates helping to lift each other up. But you cannot just be on the asking end. You must answer to and bring others up with you. So back to New York. I didn't stay as an assistant forever, nor did I stay in the long distance business, which thanks to technology doesn't even exist anymore. My next stop was financial services. Now, please remember that I was an English and French major 
who had never taken economics or finance. So what was I doing working for Citibank? Well, I kind of fell in love with corporate communications. And it turns out that there is a lot of publishing in corporate communications, so it was a win-win. At Citi, I learned another valuable skill. I raised my hand for everything, including tasks I knew nothing about. When you bolt and when you find yourself heading in the direction of your dreams, even if you're not on the actual doorstep just yet, raise your hand for everything. Working on those projects with other departments, stepping in when a teammate was out, and volunteering for things no one else wanted to do helped me learn more about the organization, build skills, and experience new areas. And it built trust. You will find that accountability matters at all levels of an organization, personally and professionally. I could trust myself to follow through. My teammates could trust me to show up. And that's co-creating a culture that thrives. Aside from raising my hand for everything, another lesson that emerged out of my experience was that it wasn't just that I was willing to do the work, but that I was a team player, someone who most people enjoy working with. And believe me, when it's your fourth night in a row of working past midnight, being with people you like is really important. Some might think I was doing menial work and sometimes it felt that way. But on the other hand, I was in a room with colleagues who were three or four more levels senior than I was, where I got to hear all of their thinking going into the deal at hand, call my colleagues by name, and they called me by mine. And you know what happened next? Organically, I began to build a network. That meant more complex and important projects, more meaning for me, and more and more responsibility. I was there for 12 years and left as a vice president and the youngest member of the firm's leadership team. Stories can often sound linear. This wasn't linear. The only line was the one I'd drawn from Roanoke to New York. Otherwise, mine was a crooked path. It's only linear in retrospect when I see that each of my experiences was a prerequisite for what came next. And that's the beauty and the burden. In life, we don't get to decide what comes next, but we can decide how we are going to show up in whatever comes next. And that brings me to the most important lesson I've learned. That is to ask, what do you need from me? In the course of my career with plenty of scraped knees, embarrassments, and tears, I can tell you that the worst year of my life came later after I landed my dream job. I was asked to lead global communications for the world's leading prestige beauty company. I loved the work. I loved my team. I loved the brands and products. And my first year was horrible. It was a time of massive transition for the company. I was in a new industry, and I had a very painful public failure. My epic mistake was not to let the chairman emeritus, the one with his name on the company's front door, know that a potential crisis was brewing. Of course I shared that information with my two bosses named on the org chart, but that wasn't enough. Now mistakes are fine, I encourage them. We want to make mistakes of judgment, not integrity. And mine in that first year was a mistake of judgment, and it was extremely painful to own, but I did own it and I moved forward. Believe me, I considered quitting, but I kept on. 
Then it finally occurred to me, wait a minute. I ask a lot of questions. That's how I learn. But what I never asked my true boss was, what do you need from me? So I gathered my courage, went into his office, and after apologizing profusely, I asked him, what do you need from me? And he told me down to the last detail. And in that moment, my question changed everything. So please save yourself some time and pain. And if you remember one thing on this joyful day, remember to ask the people that you work with, what do you need from me? What does it look like? What does success look like for you? How do you want to be communicated with? How often? What keeps you up at night? Because those things may not be in the job description, and it often isn't the org chart. It's important to ask the question frequently because the answers will change. I think what do you need from me is something we should also ask ourselves. Be brave enough to ask yourself, what do I need in this moment? To cry, to wait a beat, and please do before you hit send. Maybe when things are so bad, you just need to sleep on it and see how things are in the morning. And things may be worse in the morning, but you'll be more prepared to deal with them. And graduates, this is how change happens. Every single time you expand your thinking to include even one more person, rather than just reacting and retreating, you change the culture and the future for the better. You have increased the chances for more communication, more honesty, more success, and better outcomes for everyone involved. And yes, you are going into a world with a lot of problems. Problems that we have not experienced before as a culture or frankly as a species. Climate change is an existential threat. The global refugee crisis is exponentially worse with the Ukraine invasion. Democracy and human rights seem to be dissolving under our feet. That is the reality of our world today. But this is where I'm going to follow in the tradition of 36 years ago and share a quote. It is one that means a lot to me and it's one that brought me back after every stumble and it brought me back to Hollands. The quote is from the Talmud and it reads, do not be daunted by the enormity of the world's grief. You are not obligated to complete the work, but neither are you free to abandon it. When we say you are not obligated to complete the work, but neither are you free to abandon it, we are really asking the world what do you need from me? When we make intentional choices true to our calling, when we raise our hand and raise each other up, when we take a moment and ask ourselves and the world, what do you need from me right now? We take a step closer to becoming the person we want to be in the world we say we want to live in. But it takes all of us, and that is a relief, because that is what Hollins is. It's all of us. So class of 2022, cherish that feeling of wanting to bolt. You are ready. Thank you from Alexandra Trower, class of 1986. <laughs> Graduates, please rise, turn to the camera, and give Alex a big round of applause.
Turn to the camera. Thank you, everyone. In early May at Honors Convocation, our annual celebration of academic achievement, we conferred special awards, prizes, and recognitions to a group of outstanding students. Names of these students are listed in your program. Would the convocation honorees please stand and be recognized for your accomplishments? Thank you. Today, we recognize students who are receiving commencement awards. The Faculty Award for Academic Excellence is awarded to the students with the second highest academic standing in the class of 2022. This year, we are pleased to announce that this honor goes to two students, Nabila Nashrula Megjani and Chinwa Rosie Wong. <laughs> Nabila and Rosie, please come forward to be recognized. The first faculty award for academic excellence goes to the students with the highest academic standing. This year, we are pleased to announce that this honor goes to two students, Abashari Lamechane and Apoorva Verma. Abashari and Apoorva, please come forward to be recognized. I am now pleased to present the Algernon Sidney Sullivan Community Award, given by the Algernon Sidney Sullivan Foundation to honor the memory of the founder of the New York Southern Society. This award is made to a person associated with Hollins University who has shown in daily living and work those characteristics that exhibit the noblest of spiritual and human qualities. This year's recipient came to Hollands in 2006, and from the moment she arrived on our campus, she has led with her heart. Her engaging personality, can-do attitude, and spirit of perseverance, no matter the challenge or obstacle, have endeared her to many. And without a doubt, her integrity and compassion have profoundly impacted countless students. A sense of belonging has been the driving force behind everything this year's Sullivan Award recipient has sought to accomplish. The beloved patio parties held on Fridays outside Moody Center our tribute to her aspirations and enthusiastic work, an event where students can come together and craft, play games, enjoy some snacks, and above all, spend time together in community. At the end of each day and each academic year, one colleague noted, her fervent hope has simply been that every student feels like they have found their place at Hollins. 
We are profoundly grateful that for the past 16 years, this individual has found her place at Hollins. We are sad that she is leaving us as this academic year concludes, but at the same time, we are excited for her as she embarks on new adventures, ones where she will certainly continue to connect with and inspire others in wonderful and enduring ways. And gratitude for her dedicated support of the Hollins University community. Hollins bestows the Algernon Sidney Sullivan Award upon Patty O'Toole, Vice President for Student Affairs and Dean of Students. It is now a pleasure to present the Algernon Sidney Sullivan Student Award. This year's recipient of the Algernon Sidney Sullivan Student Award goes to an individual who cares deeply for her peers and takes it upon herself to actively mentor and support every student she encounters at Hollins. She has a clear and passionate commitment to improving diversity and inclusion on campus and creating healthier environments for our students. In addition to being a student chaplain and a CA, she is an active member of many clubs and programs on campus, including the Holland Student Theater Association, the National Theater Honor Society, where she served as business manager this semester, and the Asian Student Alliance, where she served as president, vice president, and is currently a general member. She is also engaged with the Hollins community as an ETP mentor and community assistant. In addition, she has a wonderful sense of humor, and her epic use of memes as a communication tool is inspiring. She has been described by staff and faculty as a thoughtful leader and a supportive peer mentor for those who might need an extra nudge. She's a positive force in the department. By the students who have had the opportunity to experience her mentorship, she is said to always have a positive attitude even when things don't go as planned and she never makes them feel judged in the process. She is said to be an amazing leader because not only does she know what she's doing, but she also cares about what she's doing. She's a collector and loves finding antiques and fossils to add to her collection. She loves woodworking and has many beautiful pens to show for it. In addition, she is a loving and attentive pet owner and enjoys taking her adorable dog on long walks and still manages to make time to show her sister, also a student at Hollins, how to be more mature while maintaining a sense of kindness. This fall, she will join the admissions team at Hollins University and use her positive and supportive energy to recruit and encourage new students. It is with great pleasure that I present this year's Algernon Sidney Sullivan Student Award to Mary Ming McDonald. <laughs> Ming, please come forward. Bushnell Award is given each year to a graduating senior who displays the finest spirit of leadership during her career at Hollins. 
This year's recipient is truly a young scholar in every sense of that term. Her interest in global issues and finance led to her majoring in international studies with a minor in economics. Additionally, her commitment to social justice drove her decision to add a minor in social justice as well. Her work is exceptional, turned in on time, and is of the highest quality. She is also one of those students who always adds to this esprit de corps within the classroom community. She participates in class discussions, listens deeply to others, and thinks critically about the course material. She's never content to simply digest information without examination. Rather, she is an exceptional student in all measures. She is inquisitive, bright, and hardworking. She spent the first semester of her final year abroad in London, which was a dream of hers. She was actually abroad in Paris, and I know this because I got a postcard from her. <laughs> This year's recipient is a true leader, not only in the classroom, but outside of the classroom as well. While at Hollins, she was a member of the Hollins Activity Board, a community assistant, a diversity monologue troop member, SGA vice president, SGA president, and engaged with a variety of other clubs and organizations. Her inclusive style ability to listen, openness to all possibilities, work ethic, and love of Hollands is evident in everything she does. This year's recipient truly represents the finest spirit of leadership at Hollands, and we are honored to present the Annie Terrell Bushnell Award to Lena Garung. The Jane Cock Funkhauser Award honors the senior who, in addition to being a good student, is preeminent in character and leadership. This year's recipient has maintained an outstanding academic record while pursuing a Bachelor of Science degree in economics with data analytics and mathematics minors. She is the embodiment of high character and leadership in the classroom in co-curricular activities and on campus. While rigorously pursuing her academics, this student has also served in our community in numerous ways. She served as an international student orientation program peer mentor, a career connector, a quantitative reasoning tutor, a member of the library student advisory board, and the secretary of Accent. She has also been on a board been the board member of the Honor Conduct and Appeal Board and the Student Conduct Chair of HCA. Our recipient is known for her quiet determination, strong work ethic, and can-do attitude. And she's making me smile right now. Her commitment to Holland's community and her peers is barred none. She cares deeply both inside and outside of the classroom. She truly has never sought out recognition, reward, or praise through these experiences. Nonetheless, she has garnered the respect and admiration of those around her. Her peers admire her thoughtful leadership style and her eagerness to help, mentor, and support others. Her professors admire her strong work ethic and fierce commitment to academic excellence. Administrators and staff admire her insight, honesty, and dedication to promoting the best interest of those around her. For achievements in academia, leadership, and good citizenship, we are very pleased to award this year's 
Jane Koch Funkhauser Award to Abashiri Lamichane. It is now my great pleasure to introduce our senior class presidents, Summer Jaime and Ali Mahano. Summer is from Richmond, Texas, and is graduating today with degrees in business and economics. She was a member of the swim team and a Holland's Activity Board novelty member. Ali is from Los Angeles, California, and is graduating today with degrees in Spanish and political science. She was president of Union de Estudiantes Latins, a three-time orientation leader, and also my Ada Queen. Please join me, Summer and Allie. Hello all, um, good morning to everyone, seniors, congratulations, we made it. Good morning to parents, faculty, staff, Ada. Um, I am so honored to be here. Um, the past four years here at Hollins have shaped us in many ways we would have never imagined. Many of us came with the intention of keeping a low profile, passes our passing our classes, earning a degree, and leaving quickly to start our lives. Many of us failed at that attempt, including myself. Hollins is a campus that builds community and ties you into so many extracurriculars. In the past four years, I've grown in many aspects. I've been president of Unión de Estudiantes Latines for three years. For two years, I was La Casa Hispánica's vice president, and I've been social media coordinator, have had positions in class cabinet, and was so excited to become Ada Queen this year. It was a lot to deal with, and I pray I don't have to experience that kind of stress again. But it taught me that I can handle whatever is thrown my way with the help of the community this campus builds. It brought me closer to my advisor, peers, and friends. It taught me that no matter the outcome of something, I'd have people supporting me and rooting for me. We missed so many of our beloved traditions last year. There was no Tinker Day for our junior year. Our ring night was moved to the spring term and became ring week. And there was no senior week to send off our bigs with much love. It was a hard year, but we made the most of it. Zoom classes were sometimes fun, but most times stressful due to the horrible Wi-Fi in our dorms. We can all agree on that. It was a challenge for all of us. Our friends were thousands of miles away, and only half of campus was here, including half of the professors. Junior year was definitely a hard year, but we overcame the obstacles thrown our way. And now, we, now here we stand with our cords, serving as a reminder of the success, successes we've had since arriving here, and we carry them with fulfillment, along with a little bit of leftover stress. We proudly carry evidence of our successes with us, and I hope after four years of this institution, we walk away with confidence, not just in our victories, but in our failures as well the things we never put on plaques or hang up on the walls or wear around our necks. The job applications and Tinder matches that ghosted us. The tests we bombed, the meetings we missed. We're also here to celebrate all that because in the past four years we've grown and it has led us to where we are standing now, built us up and helped us spread our curiosity to trying new things. That beautiful milestone is what we are celebrating today. I'm proud of all of you seniors and the outcome of our four years of Hollands that it has given us. Thank you so much.
the journey to get here today, I'm sure, is not how anyone imagined it to be, right? If you think about it, we as a class have not had a single normal year of college. I invite everyone now to think back to fall 2018. Even if you weren't a first year at the time, just think back now. Most of us were entering college super excited as first years, looking forward to being on the stage in four or so years. Less than a month into college, we were all sent home due to a hurricane that unfortunately mm, never came. The next year as sophomores, we all watched as the nation sent home students. And finally, we got our two week spring break that left us at home enrolled in Zoom University. Junior year came and went with a very different campus. Some of us were here, while others were taking classes across the world, literally at one in the morning. Then our senior year arrived, and we all rushed back to campus and found ourselves running down the dorm halls with Tinker Day pots and pans. If we as a class have taken anything away from the past four years, I hope it's that life is full of the unknown, but that it's okay and we're gonna be okay. No matter how many five-year plans we make or how many times we may map out the future, at the end of the day, we simply don't know what tomorrow holds. And no matter how hard we try to control or manifest things, we simply can't. I mean, I know Ariana Grande said God is a woman, but some days it really seems like the patriarchy is out to get us. <laughs> Life is full of constant change, but that change is what makes it so rewarding. Sure, a once-in-a-lifetime pandemic hit, but we're here. Sure, social change rocked our campus and our nation, but we're here. Sure, our pipes burst every few weeks, but we're here. <laughs> Being here today with all of you has shown me that we are more than capable, capable of doing anything we set our minds to. For a lot of us, that was just being here today. Despite all the struggles we may have faced, we're here. And we have Hollands to thank for allowing us to grow and become the people that we are today. Sure, most of us probably plan to graduate, but I don't think we expected it to come this fast. But now that's here, I'm feeling okay. I mean, I'll be the first to say, I don't know what the next chapter of my life looks like. I'm sure some of y'all may feel the same. After four or so years of late library sessions, NIFA parties, and Monday bingos, this is a really big change for all of us. But I hope we can all step away today with the skills and tools that Hollins has provided us over our time here to step into our next phase with confidence, no matter what that may look like. Be comfortable with the unknown and able to adapt to anything that life throws at us. Hey, if we can survive a power outage during final exams, I know we can survive anything. Thank you all once again for being here with us as we turn the page from Hollins to whatever life may brings us next. Congratulations, seniors, and thank you. Good morning. Will the candidates for the degree of Master of Fine Arts please rise? Madam President, I have the honor on behalf of the faculty to present to you candidates for the degree Master of Fine Arts, all of whom have successfully completed the requirements for the degree by the faculty, as des described by the faculty and approved by the Board of Trustees. By the authority of the Commonwealth, on the recommendation of the faculty and approval of the trustees of the university, I confer upon you the degree of Master of Fine Arts with all the rights and privileges appertaining thereto. Incoming board chair, Deborah Mead, will join me in greeting the candidates. Monica Faith. Archuleta, Stephen Ray Baltz, Samantha Michelle Barnawalt, David Russell Beach, Anthony Rashid Burrell.
Fernando Carrillo. <laughs> Courtney Gay Collado. Anna Christine Crumpecker. Thang Tuan Kim Dao. Jeffrey Dingler. Brian Robert Ellis. Sarah Ann Cosgrove Gaumond. Stephanie Denise Goldman. Adria Meyer Gorsuch. Jamie Elizabeth Hudala. Alina Katrin. <laughs> Catherine Lenore Leslie. <laughs> Jennifer Lee Luevanos. Kristen Alyssa Lundberg. Megana Mysore. Gail Marie Noren. Seatley Ocampo. <laughs> Anne Sophie Louise Olson. <laughs> Rebecca Marie Piazza. G. H. Plog, <laughs> Elizabeth K. Quinones, <laughs> Angelica Marie Ramos, <laughs> Emily. Catherine Ritchie. Jamoris Rivers. Taylor Russell. Laura Marie Schmidt. Samantha Gail Sessoms. Cameron Kenley Vanderwerf. Erica Joyce Zephyr. Will the candidates for the degree of Master of Arts please rise. Madam President, I have the honor on behalf of the faculty to present to you candidates for the degree Master of Arts 
all of whom have successfully completed the requirements for the degree as prescribed by the faculty and approved by the Board of Trustees. By the authority of the Commonwealth, on the recommendation of the faculty and approval of the trustees of the university, I confer upon you the degree of Master of Arts with all the rights and privileges appertaining thereto. Karen Marie Bailey. Nicole Laureen Harrison. Will the candidates for the degree of Master of Arts in Teaching please rise? Madam President, I have the honor on behalf of the faculty to present to you the candidates for the degree Master of Arts in Teaching all of whom have successfully completed the requirements for the degree as prescribed by the faculty and as approved by the Board of Trustees. By the authority of the Commonwealth, on the recommendation of the faculty and approval of the trustees of the university, I confer upon you the degree of Master of Arts in Teaching with all the rights and privileges appertaining thereto. Sochi Ayala Gonzalez. Jennifer, Jennifer Sarah Baylard. Mary Rose Christian. Claire Leah Gallo. Christian James K. Abigail Lynn Linkus. Jennifer Joe Mundy. Matthew Brian Peck. Sarah Leanna Rains. Sarah Emily Rodden. <laughs> Laurel Virginia Skinner. Danielle Helen Stover. Mary Jean Chorus Sullivan. Victoria Kanamaso Wee Willis. Will the candidates for the degree of Master of Arts in Teaching and Learning please rise? Madam President, I have the honor on behalf of the faculty to present to you candidates for the degree Master of Arts in Teaching all of whom have successfully completed the requirements for the degree as prescribed by the faculty and approved by the Board of Trustees. By the authority of the Commonwealth on the recommendation of the faculty and approval of the trustees of the university, I confer upon you the degree of Master of Arts in Teaching and Learning with all the rights and privileges appertaining thereto. Shana DeBoard Smith. Will the candidates for the degree of Master of Arts in Liberal Studies please rise? Madam President, I have the honor on behalf of the faculty to present to you candidates for the degree Master of Arts in Liberal Studies, 
all of whom have successfully completed the requirements for the degree as prescribed by the faculty and as approved by the Board of Trustees. By the authority of the Commonwealth on the recommendation of the faculty and approval of the trustees of the university, I confer upon you the degree of Master of Arts in Liberal Studies with all the rights and privileges appertaining thereto. Arden Dale Bayliss, Jr. <laughs> Sherry Lynn Dragovich. Lizzie W. Gathitu, Andrew West Smith, Bradley Barrett White. Will the candidates for the bachelor's degree please rise? <laughs> Madam President, I have the honor on behalf of the faculty to present to you candidates for the bachelor's, bachelor's degree, all of whom have successfully completed the requirements for the degree as prescribed by and approved by the Board of Trustees. By the authority of the Commonwealth, on the recommendation of the faculty and approval of the trustees of Holland University, I confer upon you the bachelor's degree and admit you to all its rights and privileges. After receiving your degrees, please take the opportunity while leaving the stage to reposition your tassel from right to left. <laughs> Abashri Lamichane, summa cum laude, Departmental Honors and Economics. Apurva Verma, summa cum laude. <laughs> Nabila Nasrula Megjani, summa cum laude. <laughs> Jin Y. Rosie Wong, summa cum laude, Departmental Honors and Communication Studies. <laughs> Akshita Akshi Agarwal, summa cum laude, Departmental Honors in Mathematics and Economics. <laughs> Kaylee Morgan, Aroesti, magna cum laude. Anna Claire Arthur, cum laude, Departmental Honors in Chemistry. Sarah Mackenzie Barnett. Mater Dawit Bello, summa cum laude. Kaylee Kat Aileen Byron. Juliana Katarina Brell, magna cum laude, Departmental Honors in Psychology. Elizabeth Katie Brown, magna cum laude. Asia Latasha Brown. <laughs> Paula Chrissy Christine Bryant. Emily 
Michelle Bullifant. Julie Ann Busker. Madison Page Butler. Jedine Area Avignon Cabrera, summa cum laude. Abeni Benny Simone Campos. Madison Taylor Charles. Emily Dale Clark. Faith Jacqueline Clarkson, magna cum laude, departmental honors in history. Quinn Zoe Cohen, summa cum laude, departmental honors in English. Leah Monique Coltrane, Departmental Honors in Film. <laughs> Courtney Page Cook. Samantha Elaine Coy. Ambrielle Jessica Craig. Anne Mabel Kramer, cum laude. <laughs> Hannah Jo Crum. <laughs> Molly Emma Davis, Departmental Honors in Theater. Regina Marie Davis, magna cum laude. Elizabeth Ann Marine Dion, summa cum laude, departmental honors in theater. Amanda Marie Dobert. Samantha Mercedes Downey. <laughs> Taylor Alexandra Drummond, magna cum laude, departmental honors in creative writing. Yvonne Michelle Duncan. Fanny Isabel Estrada Lugo, magna cum laude. Moira Elizabeth Everett, summa cum laude. Isabella Fa Fallon, cum laude. Siobhan Michelle Ferguson. Marguerite Ellen Fisher. Taya Nicole Fry, cum laude.
Becerra, Lizzie Elizabeth Fuller, summa cum laude, Departmental Honors in Creative Writing. Monica Kilkuski, Thomas Fury, Departmental Honors in Political Science. Grace Anita Gaynor, cum laude, Departmental Honors in English. <laughs> Tabitha Renee Gills, summa cum laude, Departmental Honors in English. <laughs> Catherine Kat Aaron Gibson. <laughs> Lena. Gurung Bamjam, summa cum laude. Allison Dana Hadley, magna cum laude. Darren Kath, Catherine Ray Ham, cum laude, departmental honors in creative writing. Mackenzie Soleil Hampton, summa cum laude, Departmental Honors in Creative Writing. <laughs> Madison Elizabeth Haar, magna cum laude. Maya Florence Panuswamy Hart, summa cum laude. Christina Marie Harvey, cum laude. Christina! Abigail Parker Hegwood, cum laude. Carson Ray Helms. Amy Faith Harrington, summa cum laude. Grace Marie Hilton, magna cum laude. Caitlin Annette Freeman Hirabayashi, summa cum laude, departmental honors in film. Anna Josephine Hollingsworth, cum laude, Departmental Honors in Theater. <laughs> Claudia Josephine Holman. <laughs> Jesse Ann Hood. Samantha Jane Hoyer, summa cum laude. Summer Ivan Jaime, summa cum laude. Isabella Louise Jesse, cum laude, Departmental Honors in Biology. Katie Lee Johnson, magna cum laude. <laughs> Leah Nicole Johnson. Yeah. Hannah Markel Jones. Zoe Alexia Jordan. <laughs> Sejila Kanwal Gul Dawood, 
magna cum laude. Smriti Cadwell, summa cum laude. Marina Stella Eli Kavelu. <laughs> Sophia Khan. <laughs> Orchid Ku, cum laude. Anna Ko, summa cum laude. Vintage Michelle Covell, magna cum laude. Shaveksha Kuwar, magna cum laude. Mackenzie Lee Landreth. <laughs> Sylvia Raven Lane, magna cum laude. <laughs> Elizabeth Lindsay Lauderdale, summa cum laude. Emily Michelle Laletta, summa cum laude, Departmental Honors in Gender and Women's Studies. <laughs> Cressy C. Lee. <laughs> Celeste Grace Leeds. La Liberty, summa cum laude, Departmental Honors in Creative Writing. <laughs> Eleanor Ella Francis Lewis. <laughs> Tiana T. Marie Little Clinton. Fiona Mihalik, cum laude, Departmental Honors in Dance. <laughs> Zahin Mabuba, summa cum laude, Departmental Honors in International Studies. Son, Ali, Gisela Ma Mahano, Magna Cum Laude. <laughs> Hannah Nicole Markham. Elizabeth Rose Marsak, magna cum laude. Asia Lane Mavers. Margaret Maggie May McCroby. Mary Joanna Ming McDonald, cum laude. <laughs> Elena Marie McKeeman. <laughs> J. 
Jamisha Jamie Inez McLemore. <laughs> Emily Page Miller, summa cum laude, Departmental Honors in Sociology. Merwin Isolde Maying Minson, summa cum laude. <laughs> Emma Sheridan Moore, magna cum laude. <laughs> Spencer Reed Moore. Annie D. Morgan with Honor in the Horizon program. <laughs> Alexis Ebony Maureen, cum laude. <laughs> Sarah Catherine Neal, cum laude. Win Min Hua, cum laude. Elise Ashley Nicholson. Caitlin Marta Oaken. Anna Per Olof, summa cum laude. Rose Frances Osborne, cum laude. Autumn Marie Dawn Overstreet, summa cum laude. Caitlin Nicole Palmer, cum laude. <laughs> Isabella Marie Palmizano. Simran Parajuli, summa cum laude. Ilana Leah Joy Pedro Sirabisi. Robin Haley Pinellis. Marianne Jude Walker Pratt, summa cum laude. Deirdre Kelly Price, summa cum laude. <laughs> Abigail Glenn Richards, summa cum laude. Kimberly Ibet Romero, magna cum laude. Anne Marie Sully, summa cum laude, departmental honors in creative writing. Kendall Renee Sanders, magna cum laude. Shuchi Sanyal, cum laude. <laughs> Natalia Violetta Saram, summa cum laude, departmental honors in English.
Savannah Morgan Sasser. Shelby Grace Ciano. Savannah Nicole Scott. Tyler Simone Sesker, cum laude. Departmental Honors in Gender and Women's Studies. <laughs> Lacey Kate Shelton. <laughs> Casey Elizabeth Shiflett. Simran Shreshta, summa cum laude, Departmental Honors in Economics. <laughs> Carrie Ann Stover. <laughs> Kayla Joy Searles. Keenan Johanna Searles, magna cum laude. <laughs> Isabella Grace Taylor, magna cum laude, departmental honors in political science. <laughs> Samantha Leanne Taylor, magna cum laude. Emma Kate Thomas, summa cum laude. <laughs> Zoe Madeline Thornhill, magna cum laude, departmental honors in international studies. <laughs> Lorena Patricia Tobar. Elsie Uwera, cum laude. <laughs> Sarah Kathleen Vincent, Vincent, Departmental Honors in Psychology. Lindsay Elizabeth Walter, magna cum laude. <laughs> Molly Elizabeth Ward. Ansley Morgan West. Lindsay Autumn Wygant, magna cum laude. Amity Jane Williams, cum laude. Congratulations. Chloe Abigail Wood, magna cum laude. Taya Alethea Wright. Maddie Alexandra Zaney, cum laude. <laughs> President Hinton, I have the honor of presenting to you the class of 2022 
graduates of Hollins University. Thank you, Provost McClary. To the class of 2022, congratulations. Friends, please join me in extending a heartfelt and well-deserved round of applause to the team that orchestrated today's commencement exercises. Without their exceptional planning and hard work, today would not have been possible. Thank you to our Hollins team. And finally, to the graduate and undergraduate classes of 2022, one more congratulations. Indeed. The Hollins Diploma you received today is an enduring symbol of your academic achievement and of your connection to this very special time and, pl <coughs> and place. You are a manifestation of our beloved mission, which calls each of you to lead lives of active learning, fulfilling work, personal growth, achievement, and service to society. May every heart and every mind among us be filled with wisdom, creativity, and love. I now declare the 180th commencement exercises at Hollins University concluded. Please wait for the benediction from Katina Martin. Thank you. Shall we stand? Graduates, may every guidance, direction, peace, and wisdom, protection, favor, courage, every resource, every influence, may all of your determinations, may everything that you need come in full. And for the rest of us, may we go and may peace abide with you. Amen. Yeah.